Okay, this is a revisit of the 8 kilowatt PowerMate Coleman's got the low output. This is the end bell it's taken off. There's actually four long screws. They've got quarter 20, 7 sixteenths. This is the output of the generator, the 220 volt windings, the yellow, the whites, excuse me, are the neutral, the blacks are the hot. Okay, this is the exciter winding. There's two yellows and one blue. There's a Molex connector. It's got a semicircle here, a non-semicircle right there. What that does is this puts out AC voltage uh, from the residual magnetism of the rotor here. This is rectified, and then you get the DC that goes through and powers these slip rings. Now the slip rings on here are such that the one in mine that's farther away from the center line is positive. The closer one to the center line is negative. And across that there's a capacitor, 130 microfarad, 200 volts. And on mine that's reads of only about 20, 30 microfarads. And so that's why mine's got low output. And that's a... 130 microfarad, 200 volts by TEA PO. I think there's some on eBay. I don't sell them, but I think there's a replacement that's uh, 200 microfarad uh, also. And it's got snaps on here. Connect on some clips. The end bell over here, of course, when I took it off, you've got this piece on here. The bolts on here look like they're little rivets, and they're actually screws, and I probably did what I shouldn't have done. I actually went through and drilled them out. At first, I tried to get a Torx in there, and they wouldn't come out, and I probably should have used um, a left-handed screw and got in there into the head and backed it out. So, once I put this together, I'm going to have to put some screws. They look like they're either, I don't know if they're number fours, or they might be two and a half millimeter uh, metric. Uh, I'm not really sure on that. These are the spring loaded brushes. They go back here. Those are a common brush that's available all over the place. This is the model number. 478022. It's eight kilowatt, 10,000 surge. This is the back cover. Now if you undo these, to replace the brushes these little clips sometimes can you got to be careful they don't jump into here so in another video I've got about replacing this if you let that kind of drop in there it will kind of get trapped in here but you might have to go in there and fish it out hook on these little clips anyways the digressing here this is the output off the exciter the Molex connector and that's got AC it's got a center tap and it goes to a diode here and there's another diode here that I pull off and they're screwed on the bottom like this. Those diodes are 1N2160s and here's the polarity on this. The two windings here, the exciter windings here, you got the two yellows and then the blue. The blue wire connects up to the positive terminal. You come back through the negative and that goes to this bus bar. That bus bar is the heat sink and then the diodes are such the part that's screwed down the arrows coming out. This is the little clip piece. So the threaded part is right here on the heat sink and you go more positive through the arrow here back into the winding so what I'm going to do in this I'm going to run this thing with all this from uh, outside just to play around with measuring uh, back powering this with DC just as an experiment but in an early video I only got about a hundred and I think about a hundred and ten volts at a light load instead of roughly 120 and this capacitor in mine is is bad now a test bed with a little 
capacitor tester by B and K. Um, but if you put voltage across capacitor, sometimes it'll sort of reform, and that's probably what was going on. It was probably had maybe had a little bit higher capacity a couple years ago, and so um, it probably wasn't still being totally rectified. Um, at least the full wave part of it uh, going up and driving this hard enough. What happens on here is the peak voltage is going to be less without a capacitor. And when you get the two capacitors here, it's going to charge up some more. So this capacitor, uh, capacitors, electrolytics, are they have a limited life because of time, temperature, and just lack of use because this hadn't been used for years. And on here, you've got the two blues. One of the blues, of course, hooks up to the connector. This little piece here is the connector, this little amoeba-shaped thing. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and... I was going to try to find a connector like this. Uh, there's so many different types out, but I'm going to go ahead and connect this, undo these clips, and cut a little access hole here and just pull that out and then go through and hook another set of wires here to brushes just to do some experimentation and have an external set of diodes. So the screw up here is I should have gone through and, and gotten a left-handed screw and tried to get this off of here. And the question is when I put this back, um, the heads that were on this were very small, little mushroom heads. And if you go through on this down, there is some decent amount of clearance, but I'm not sure if you can get away with the screw that's got a really high head on it. I might have to put that on and just grind the top off. I think on this you could probably get away with only one or two screws. It's not really being shipped. This is where the capacitor, of course, nests in here like this in the side. So you got to pull the end bell to get that off. In a mine, the diodes are good. They just kind of look rough. They got a 1998 date code on there. And they said on mine, MSCR2160-01. Had a 7 16 inch nut. 3 8 inch nut on the bottom and a 7 16 And I um, apologize, that was the two different wrenches on... Actually, the diode over here on the bolts that hold the end bells on, both of those are 7 16 So, it's just a little bit of brain fade. This diode's a standard diode. It's been around forever. It's a 600 volt, 40 amp. That's a lot. It probably only, probably only has a few amps going through there, but a lot of times they just do that. They may have just been cheap. Once I'm over, make it more robust. Maybe it's a little bit more stiffer. And I've been redoing the schematic, just fooling around. There's the positive. There's the bearing. There's the negative. So the one that's farther away, the largest or orbit, this is the positive brush. That's the negative brush. So it's got DC. Um, comes out of here, it's rectified. you got DC from the brushes powering the rotor. There is no regulator on this particular one. There's the slip rings. Here's my little hokey schematic. Now the bearing on here that goes into here, I'd grease this in another video, but this again went underwater in Katrina because it was a junker. And it turns out the bearing has got a little whoop-de-doo serration type thing that you can kind of knock it out of there. And it's a needle bearing, standard, three-fourths inch bore, one inch OD, three fourths inch width, needle bearing, JTT1212. It's probably by Torrington here. Had a little assets on here, but this bearing's been made since the earth was cooling. Mine's in decent shape. I mean, it had, had some rust and stuff on it, but if you ever have one of these that. Uh, Let's say went ahead and got uh, the grease went bad and it sees it's going to spin in this plastic piece and that's going to be a disaster because it's going to heat up and ruin the end bell. So 
once this out, I'm going to go through and um, either buy a new bearing or just go through and get the grease out and re-grease this again. So again, the plan is to go through just because I like to experiment. Um, I kind of searched on eBay and stuff for these three-pin Molex, and there's a lot of these Let's doing a close-up there for my own self. It's got a three-pin Molex. This is a semicircle here. This is a non-semicircle. Uh, the polarity doesn't really matter on this thing because it's this is just putting out AC. It could actually be wired either way if it wasn't polarized. But what I'm going to do is go through and... I was going to cut all this, but that's just kind of screwball. But since these have got little clips, I'm just going to undo all this and have the wires come out through here and leave the connector in place so I can put it back when I'm done playing around. But I'm just going to hook a bridge, halfway bridge outside of here. Uh, another one just to play around with and then go through and connect onto these, extend them out. And this green one here, I'll just hook another wire onto here, extend all this out, cut a hole through here. And then put an external bridge because I want to go play around with what would happen if the capacitor is too small or if it's not there or even just back feeding this directly and just plot the generator curve of the uh, what the output is versus the input to this. I think in the one of the repair manuals they say with this 8 kilowatt it's supposed to be 150 volts DC and what I measured was about 60 volts um, but that was when the generator was running uh, not at 3600. I think it was running like uh, 2400 or 28 or something like that. And this unit is, of course, one that is a junker. I got it for free. Went underwater in Katrina. So, as another guy mentions in a video, you got to make care of this is all. You don't want to nick any of this so it doesn't short out. It could be that. I'm on borrowed days on this anyways. And I've got another video showing on this particular generator for some reason. The neutral is not connected.